Hi guys, welcome to Pixel Affair. It's Kobe here, and in today's video, we are going to see how we we'll do this particular effect. Right, you can see these spikes coming out, morphing from flat and coming up, right, with the textures and everything. And this is a video I saw on Vimeo by Abra Network, right, and I I figured how it will be very easy or very simple to create something like this using Cinema 4D and the more extrude. So let's actually get into Cinema 4D and see how we will create this particular effect. So if I hit play, you can see it starts just like this. You can see it's flat and comes up you no, know, with these spikes and all of that and it transitions to something else. So let's get into Cinema 4D and see how we will do that. So I'm in Cinema 4D R26, but everything I'm doing here can be done literally in almost every Cinema 4D version that has more graph, right? So let's actually start. So the first thing I'm going to create is the plane object. So I'll come into my objects and I'll create a plane, right? I'll change the display to garage shading with line so that we see the segment of the plane. And I'll increase the segment of the plane to like 24. It could be any uh, number of segments you want, depending on how you want your spikes to look like, All right? So now we have our um, segments. And the basic thing or the simplest thing, this is quite simple, is we are going to use the more extrude. So if I come into my more graph object, you can see we have more extrude in here. I click on the more extrude and I'll make it a child of the plane object. And you can see instantly it's extruding our plane the segment each and every segment has been extruded right by the way i have a tutorial on here that explains the more extrude and everything it does so you can check it out later so now in the more extrude we can actually increase the height of our extrude right and you can see every extrude also have um segments in here right and that's controlled by these extrusion steps and that also affects the height of this um of the extrude as well so if i increase the segment you can see the height is uh, the thing is also going up right so let's set the high uh, the extrusion steps to like something like seven and maybe let's reduce the height the position height we don't want we are not going to use the more extrudes um own height to control it we'll use an effector because it's an um a more um more graph object it can be affected by effectors so that's what you are going to use to transform it so I'll set the Z to maybe one, I think one, and then I reduce the um, skill, right? To it's set to zero point nine eight. I'll set it zero point eight, maybe zero zero point eight, probably two, hmm. right? I think this one will be fine. Then I'll make the Z um, one. I'll leave it just like that. So this is what we have. In fact, we can actually make it go down a bit more, right? So now if we come into, um, we select with um, our more extrude selected. If I come into my effectors and I choose plane effect, I can see it's moving uh, like the extrude part, right? So let's select the plane effector. And the reason why, if we go into the plane effector, the Y is moved 100. So you can see if I increase it, it's going on the Z axis. And the reason why it's going on the Z axis is that it's actually following the node of the um, extrude itself. So if we want it to go up the way we want it, it's either we change the Y to zero and increase the Z axis like this, or we change the axis uh, from the node to effector, right? And now it will go that way, but I'll leave it on node and I'll use the Z axis rather. So I'll make this one probably 20 for now and let's see what we have now another thing is that i can see it's not extruding the thing the segments of the object it's just extruding just the bottom part and that's because if we come into the more extrude the transform is set to from root so it's like the plane effector is only extruding or pushing only the roots but if we change it from from root to per step you can see now every um segment of the extrude is pushed 20 is pushed 20 centimeters right so now let's reduce it to probably five and just by this doing this we've literally created um a similar effect right so now with the because the plane effector we can use the field so i can come in here now choose sierra field and you can see um how everything looks like so 
so you can fill i'll actually take off the display to garage shading so you can see this is what we have but this one is protruding the initial position is protruding too much so i can actually come into the more extrude and maybe even reduce it further maybe um point something like this point five will be fine and now if you use the spherical field you can see our spikes grows on right so that's basically the effect now if you check the original video again you can see if i hit play aside the spikes itself there is a bit of details on the edges of the spikes and the segments right and that one is also simple we are going to use the atom array to create that detail right so to use the atom array just simply select the plane object you can simply create the atom array and put the plane in the atom array and you can see it started giving us some spheres and cylinders so let's select the atom array and change it from um the spherical um, the sphere radius to point probably five and you can see we have the detail in here right maybe we can even reduce it further to maybe point three depending on how you want maybe point four will be fine right but any make sure our spheres and the cylinder is always the same so that will make the cylinder two points four actually now another issue is that we can't see our plane itself right so ideally maybe we can create another copy but we don't want to do that so what you have to do is that i'll take out the plane and with the plane selected i can come into my object and i'll create a, an instance object so what's going to do is that if i go into the instance object and you go into the attribute you can see we have reference objects so this instance object is referencing this plane so what, whatever we do to this plane the same thing will apply to the instance object right if you don't have it your of the reference object in here you can simply drag and drop it in here as well so we are going to use the instance rather in the atom array so i'll drag the instance object into the atom array and you can see we have our plane and we have our instance object but anytime i scale the spherical field right you can see our atom array also comes up a bit All right so that's basically the whole idea now let's actually i think it's fine for now maybe let me increase the this thing to like six which is fine so that's basically how you literally do it now the next step is that you see in the video it has some x like the colors in the middle so how do we actually apply color to this whole thing right using two different like colors so let's actually apply the materials to it so i'll come into my materials and i'll create and using my 4d material i'll apply it to the plane first let's first of all hide the atom array let me hide it first i'll apply it to the plane and i'll make it black so i'll change this the color to um black all right we don't even need the maybe reduce the um the specular down not really all right so this is our black now how do we create the yellow x which is in the middle right or the plus sign and that's simple we are going to create another material double click on it and i'll actually go into the luminance of the material i'll first of all uncheck color so it's just the luminance and i'll create a gradient so i'll create a gradient i'll go into the gradient by clicking on the thumbnail and now i'll select the two knots so if i hold shift and select you can see you can you hold shift to select the two knots and i'll come click on the drop down arrow here and you can see that we have interpolation i'll set it to step right so now i have a gradient um which is sharp it doesn't transition from black to white it's just black and the next is white so we are good with that i'll click on one of the knots and now it will leave take off the selection but if i any if i click anywhere here you create another knot which is black and i'll move it to somewhere here so now this is going to be um in the middle of our so the white i want it to be black white black right so now we have one stripe of our cross so I'll, with the gradient created i can come into my this drop down 
and I'll choose layer. And now it has put in this gradient in a layer. So I can simply click on it again. And now you can see I'm in the layer, I'm the layer. So now we can create another layer. So I can right click on the gradient, copy. And I'll right click again and I'll say paste. And you can see it has pasted uh, not the gradient again, the one I copied. So now if I click on the this small thumbnail here, I can go into the gradient and I'll change the um, type from 2DU to 2DV. And I can see we have horizontal one. And now if I click on this arrow, I go back. I have one on the Y, uh, one horizontally and one vertically. So all I have to do is, because it's black and white, all I have to do is suggest to um, 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 add to it. So I click add, and now you can see we have a cross sign. Then I'll go ahead and apply it to our plane as well. But you can see it's not affecting it the way we want. Um, it's affecting each and every like polygon or segments. So now let's change the, we select the um, the tag of the uh, material tag of the cross, come down to the projection um, from projection UVW mapping to flat, All right? So now we are getting somewhere. And now what I can do is that I'll make sure the texture mode is on. It's right now it's model mode, so I'll put it to texture mode. And I can see the texture projection of our material. Right, you can see it's flat. You have this. Um, this is a texture texture project projection. It's looking um, facing on the Z. So we can just take the rotation tool with the texture when it's in texture mode. Now we are rotating the texture. So if I rotate to ninety, you can see now it's projecting it uh, projecting it on flat axis. Right. So now let's actually make um, our Plane. Let me actually come into the object. Tab. So the material tag selected. Come down here and now make sure tile is not checked. Because if tile is on, let me actually make the can make the texture small. You can see it's tiling our texture, but we don't want that. So I'll select the ta um, the texture tag and I'll make sure tiling is unchecked. And now you can see the X is just only in the middle, right? You can scale it however you want to make it fit our object. So now this is our uh, X, but if we hit render, it's not the way we want it. Let's actually, I'll double click on it. And now I'll right click on the texture here, copy, and I'll bring it here into the alpha, click on the alpha, right click, and I'll paste, right? And now, now on, I don't want the luminance again. So now I'll check it and now I'll check alpha and I'll come into the color so, and I'll check it. So now let's make the color the yellow. We want right so let's see this is the yellow we want and now let's come back into the alpha even though it's black and white in the alpha but you can see it's not showing if i hit render in here you can see like the whole the, everything is still yellow it's not just the plus sign in there so what you have to do is in the alpha we make sure image alpha is unchecked and now you can see the material has actually changed and if you now hit render, you can see we have our plus sign also in there. So now from here going, we can actually still we are in the material texture mode. So we can still adjust the size of our plus sign the way we want it and all of that. Right. And now everything, it's basically cool. So first of all, let's go ahead and animate our spherical field. One thing I can do is that I can actually, I think I should actually make, well, this is fine, I think. So let's actually animate our spherical field so maybe from let's increase our frame rate to maybe 250 and now from at frame zero oh not position the spherical field come into the field and now the size let's set it to zero at frame um zero and maybe at frame mm, 120 let's make it um as big as we want it. And now let's set a keyframe. So if I hit play and see, it's bringing them in. It's quite slow. Let's actually increase, um, reduce the time so that it moves faster. And also I'll come into the circle for the remapping. I'll actually reduce the remapping a bit. So if we hit play, still quite slow. Should be fast. 
Yeah. Right. And now. So. So the yeah, this is how you want it. So if I bring in the um atom array as well, you can see everything um grows up smoothly. Now another issue is that you can see the atom array is also we have to apply the same texture to it. But for now, let me disable the atom array again. And now even though we've applied the plus sign in here and we used a texture tag which is flat. So now if I use something like a deformer, maybe um, let me actually bring in something like a bend deformer and put it down here to the um, more and let me change it. Maybe I'll change the bend deformer's rotation. I'll make sure my object is set to model mode so that I don't mistakenly scale any texture. And now I have the bend deformer selected. If I rotate it, you can see um, let me actually go ahead. If I'm bending, you can see it's not stuck to the plane or the uh, object. It's sliding through, our texture is sliding through, right? So that's the problem with using the flat mode projection. But let me show you how you solve that. So what I'll do is that I'll actually go ahead and create um, something like, uh, let me actually come in here and I'll create a connect object, right? And now I'll, I'll select both the plane and the um, atom array and add, add it to the connect object, right? And now in the connect object, I'll make sure your world is unchecked so that we don't mistakenly world points that are close together. So I'll now move these two textures onto the connect object. Everything still stays the same, right? And now it applies to the um, atom array as well. So if you can see, um, actually, uh, let's see something, the atom array. I think we should select the null and the atom array. Let's actually put it in an um, atom array and the plane. Let's put it in the null before we put it in the connect. So I'll hold Alt with the atom array and the plane selected, Alt G, and I think it should be fine, All right? Oh, the instance object is unchecked, so that's why it wasn't showing. So it doesn't the null um, the null is not even necessary. So let's actually drag it out and put it back into the connect and let's delete the null object. Right. So now yeah, we've applied it to our um, we've applied the material to our connect object, right? So still if you go in and apply the bend deformer, it will still go ahead and do the same thing. It wouldn't be stuck to the margin. So let me actually add and all objects and put the connect in there and I'll go ahead and add the bend deformer again. All right. I'll rotate it to like maybe something like that. And now if I do you can see still our textures are sliding. It's not um stuck to the material. You can see it's still sliding through. So how do we get our, te our textures to stack to our objects? Right? And that's simply by right clicking on the connect right let's make sure it's set to frame zero everything here now and let me one time do it again you can see it's sliding it's not really really stuck to our object so for us to get it to stack you can simply right click on the connect and go to um material material tags and choose pin to texture right so with that selected we have you see we apply the texture a tag to which is pin to texture tag you can simply hit record and now it will store this state as the how it's supposed to be. So any changes will now be stuck to our material. All right. And now if I bend it and see now it's actually stuck to our um object. All right. So now from here going, all you have to do is to let it play. And now everything is fine. But when you want to play it, it probably might have to disable the connect and do your animation and everything before you connect because that also slows it down. Even maybe the atom array, I probably can um, take it out for now. And now we can use this to time our animation, right? For us to get that bounciness in it, we can actually use the, um, um, how do you call it? The either 
the formula deformer i can apply it after the more extrude right and i'll probably reduce the um height like that and maybe the speed i'll probably reduce this one to like maybe one make this one to like probably one just reduce it so that's so you add that you know bounciness to it all right from here going you just play around with this you can with the formula effect you can also use fields to actually also bring it on something like that all right so from here going is just basically playing around to get the kind of animation um you want maybe the ring to get that kind of feel so let's go back in all right so that's basically how you use simply the more extrude and use the materials and the painted texture tag to get this kind of effect and it's quite simple just need some time to play around i just saw it um this morning and i felt it was quite interesting and decided to like recreate it using the more extrude and i realized it's like really that simple so i hope this video was useful and you've learned something from it thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next one